Well, I knew from the time I was a child that writing was my purpose. I just remember sitting in a grade one class with a book open, reading it and thinking, this is what I'm going to do with my life. I mean, it was almost like that thunderclap, like this is what I want. The pleasure that this is giving me and the comfort that this is giving me is what I want to be giving people. That has morphed in all kinds of ways throughout my life. And I think early on, literature to me was all about escape. But poetry, for years, I went back and forth between poetry and prose and thought that that would be my direction as a writer. I kind of secretly hoped that I wasn't going to end up as a poet. So you're at a literary festival, you know, the fiction, the non-fiction writers are looking all prosperous and, you know, like well-adjusted and the poets are looking like they just came out of a, a psychiatric asylum. And I thought, oh, I hope I don't end up there. And lo and behold, is very different from prose because prose is all about sitting your butt in the chair, really dedicating yourself to that time and that discipline. Poetry to me is a very different discipline and a lot of the work doesn't look like work at all. Most of the work I do as a poet is walking around, thinking, staring out the window, clearing you know, my head and my life of any distraction and just focusing. And a lot of it is that really deep thought. The actual writing is minimal by comparison. I think it's one of the things that makes poetry difficult to justify and explain to the people in your life because it's not about productivity, right? It's not about filling pages and pages with words. It's about trying to find the right words. My previous collection of poetry, Tumor, was I was focusing very much on the body. In Pineapple Express, as the poems were starting to come together, I started to think more about the disorders of the mind. So much has been written about depression and anxiety in prose, but it hasn't really been explored in poetry in a way that I wanted to see it, but also to write about things, more contemporary things like medications and how that can change obsessive behavior, mood, anxiety, and so forth. Once in a while, a title just comes like a gift. More often than not, though, you're kind of scrolling through your mind and you're going like, oh, maybe this, maybe that. No, it's not quite right. And I think that's true for a lot of your metaphors, your openings, your closing lines, all of those really important things in a poem. Often it's a process of finding something that's good enough, but that's not quite there. And you're sort of, it's like, okay, it's a temporary, you know, it's like a working title, it's a working ending but you need to get at the one that's exactly right. And that's where all the walking, the thinking, hours and hours of just kind of, you know, doing other things, but always in the back of your mind, you're just chewing over the title, right? You're, or the closing line, you're going, okay, like what? And you get a little closer and a little closer. That moment of revelation is like, yes, this nails it. to say that I kind of railed against the direction poetry was going a number of years ago where it seemed like the more obscure the better. There's nothing more upsetting than seeing people going to a reading for the first time thinking oh you know they'll give this a try. They'll open their minds to something new and not being able to connect in any way with any of it. And to me that's the opposite unfortunately of what I think a poem should do right. I mean to me there always has to be an emotional connection. Ideally there is there are layers and depths and imagery that you have to kind of tug at and play with in your head to really get the layers of meaning underneath it but not to the extent where you're so challenged that it's like you know I just this is too much work the work has to give a big payoff for me if I'm gonna do that well I would always say like if I were on a desert island John Updike's rabbit tetralogy would accompany me the second novel is terrible, <laughs> but the first, third, and fourth are, I just think, they just encompass several decades of American life and contemporary life in a way that very few other people have been able to do. And I think what I've always admired about Updike is his ability to write about the ordinary and about relationships and, and the minutiae of relationships, which is something I've also tried to do. So that would definitely be 
one of them. What just pops into my head, Gone with the Wind, when I was a very young, it's like maybe I read it when I was nine or ten, just the impact that that book made on me. It, it was in some ways kind of a glorified romance, but it did have a huge impact on myself and on my view of relationships. The most common piece of advice was, of course, get a day job because you are not going to make a living at this. It's going to be so difficult and, you know, learn from me. Don't make the mistakes I made. And writer after writer just drilled that into me. And of course, you know, what did I do? I didn't listen. When you know something is your path in life, you don't care. It doesn't matter. And maybe it shouldn't matter because you have to do. You have to do it. I suppose if I could have infused some a bit more practicality like always I have this idea like if I could have found something that wasn't too taxing that I could do a couple days a week and still give my mind space to write and think that would have been ideal that would have lessened so much anxiety over the years it wouldn't have burdened the writing with the need to earn a living from it which can actually really do something negative to it, I think. It can really taint it in some ways. But that would be my advice to a younger writer. <laughs>is the best way that you can live your life, right? We're all looking for meaning. Those of us who've been lucky to find it in books, you know, is something that never leaves us in times of confusion, loss, you know, to know that you aren't alone, to know that other people, that writers have been able to articulate all the states of mind that we're going through right now for us, that maybe we ourselves don't have words for. Putting words to what seems wordless. For me, words have always been a way of fixing to the page experiences that have seemed impossible to live with. I think for, yeah, for everybody now, this is, this is the time to be turning to that.